What you're looking at guys is an aluminum boat dock. So this is the part that basically extends off the shore out onto the water and then onto the part that's a little bit further. And there's two sections. There's one here, there's one here. This thing is riddled with cracks all through it and we have to fix it today. So what you're seeing here is upside down. So this would actually go the other way around. The reason I have it like this is because it's only welded on three sides and there's tons of cracks everywhere. Let me bring you to the underside so you can see what, what I'm saying here. All right, so now you're looking at it from the underside looking up. So this would actually be the top and you can see how it's got a rail all the way around. Decking actually goes over all of this. So none of these surfaces on this side are welded and that's just to keep the deck, the decking so it's flush everywhere around this. So I've got it flipped upside down so we can make our repairs. And the way this works is there's no flotation uh, devices on this. It has four legs that come out of these little socket areas here with a little foot on the bottom and that rests on the bottom of the water. And you just adjust the elevation of this that you want by setting these screws right here. For whatever reason, this thing is riddled with cracks and we're gonna do our best to repair those today. And this is gonna be a MIG welding aluminum project. That's the process that this was originally done with. You can see it's cracked all the way through. There's another one here, you can see it's cracked all the way through. Guys, you can hear the geese in the background. They're getting ready to fly south. It's getting cold here in Maine. It's like 32 degrees today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go around and visually find every bad spot. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and identify it with a black marker. Just put a mark on it so I don't miss it. Then I'll come back through and we're gonna grind each one of these bad welds out and we're gonna re-weld it with some new weld. We're gonna talk about some other things here in a minute. So let me go around, start finding all these bad spots and making some marks and we'll come back in and check it out. So this is how it's actually going to be going in the water, guys. And I'm just turning it over so I can find any other spots that I couldn't see from when it was upside down so I can fix everything while I have it up on the sawhorse. Just going down it, inspecting everything, make sure I don't miss anything. Because now's the time to fix it. Well, it's right here. Now, when I talk to my customer, so you can see this is a bad one right here. I got a little X on there. You can see that. But you can see how they got to be flush on the top. I might even grind this out a little bit, V it out, weld it, and then grind it flush just to get a little more weld in there. There's obviously a reason this cracked, guys. So I told my customer, yeah, I can do, I can repair this. That's no problem at all. But uh, if it's cracked once from the factory, it's probably going to crack again. So I made him aware that I will do my best to see that this is repaired properly and that it's strong, but if it's just a problem that it's cracked because of the, if its original design, then it's just going to come back. And my customer is good with that. He knows about it. So this is obviously a customer job. So when you go into these projects, guys, just make sure you're very straightforward with your customer. Let them know what to expect. You know, don't promise them the world because you can't guarantee that that's not going to crack again. There's a reason it cracked. And that's most likely because it's under a lot of stresses and whatnot, moving it and walking on it. He said that this was underwater for a period of time. So maybe the water was like slamming against it because I guess the the uh, level of the pond or wherever this is being kept rose up and it was like partially submerged. So that could have had a problem problem with it as well and for this I told my customer I can't really price this out because it's just too extensive once you start getting into it if you find more things so I said I will you know I work for X amount of dollars per hour and if it reaches X amount of dollars then I'll give you a call and you can tell me what you want to do from there so it looks like for this one guys we got about six welds or so we got to repair so we're gonna get this back up on the sawhorse and we're gonna start welding this thing or at least start prepping it anyways You guys are probably wondering why aren't I doing this in my workshop? Well, if you guys regular viewers, you know that my workshop is narrow and long, pretty much just like this piece. So it's just gonna make it super tight 
to work around it so it's just a lot easier to do it outside plus I don't get all that aluminum dust all through my shop it's not a windy day today you can see kind of everything is super still so we can turn up our gas and we can weld this right outside plus that's stuff that you guys can do if you don't have a nice big garage or a big workshop you guys want to take on a repair like this these are things you can do these are obstacles you're going to face because you know you may have to show up to a customer's job and uh, this is actually on the water then what are you going to do have them take the whole project out uh, just so you can do you know half a dozen welds now you're going to you're going to adapt and do it in the field and get it done. And this is, these are some of the things that you have to do. Not everything is pristine and perfect, you know, working in a fab shop. I'm using a metal cutoff wheel. I'm just grinding out the crack. Same thing over here, grind out the crack. Now that I got the crack all ground out and I've actually taken some of the original weld metal out of there, what I'm going to do now is go over it with a brush, a stainless steel brush dedicated that I use just for aluminum. Now the reason I can leave some of this weld is because this weld actually penetrated into this base metal. If this was just sitting on top of it and it was like a cold fusion, it like the weld never bonded to this, I would take all the weld out, but it did bond. This, this is cracked from stress, not from lack of fusion. I just need to clean this up a little bit and then it can be ready for weld. We're gonna go right in detail today on how to do all this stuff. See how nice that cleans up guys, that gets all of those oxides off there. Just before we get ready to weld it, we'll hit it with a wire brush one more time real quick and we'll just wipe it down with some acetone. Now this one here guys, to me, does look like a lack of fusion. It could be some staining, but it just looks like this weld is sitting on top of this and it's leaching out where at the toe of the weld is what it looks like to me. but. We'll know once we start cutting into this a little bit more. But again, this weld's cracked on all three sides all the way. The moment we've been waiting for, a couple hours worth of prep for maybe <laughs> 15 minutes of welding. Welding is just like painting, guys. There is so much that leads up to the welding portion. Welding is just the little fraction of it. It's getting everything right and dialed in up to that point. Now that I've got it kind of ground back and cleaned, I wiped it with some acetone, you can actually see the crack right there. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna weave it over the top and we're gonna do a nice wide bead so it kind of spreads out the forces that are in that joint rather than it just being on one thin weld bead. It's gonna transfer that energy of stress over a wider area. It should help. If we weld the top sides, I think that's gonna add more weld than it had before, and it's also gonna make it a little bit stronger. I use this as my, like my mobile welding cart. You guys probably see it all the time when I'm doing these outside projects. I have my um, Hobart 140 plugged in there, so that's just a 120 machine. We could easily do this repair with this machine. That'd be perfect, but the problem with this is that this Hobart has a short whip on it. If you guys want to know how to MIG weld aluminum with just your standard MIG welder, I have a video for that and I'll link it up above. The reason I'm using the Yes welder for this one is that I've got it rigged up with a spool gun on the end. And as you can see, it's got a fairly long whip to it so I can kind of move around. I don't have to worry about kinks and I can get a nice, uh, a nice weldment without worrying about trying to keep everything nice in, in line and all that. Because we are welding outside, we're gonna have to turn our gas up a little higher than usual to compensate. It is pretty still though right now, so. And we'll turn on our gas. All right, oh boy. We're low. I'm gonna have to probably get some gas. We got 500 pounds of gas here. Hopefully, it gets me through today. For this, I'm using 35 thousandths 4043 Blue Demon wire. The one thing I like about this machine, guys, is that you can store preset settings. If you look at my little card that I have here, I just write down what I have for settings on the machine. This will store, I think, 10 settings. We're doing eighth inch aluminum, 35 thousandths, 4043, so I'm looking for channel zero. Like I said, you can go up to, I think, nine or 10 
So what we do is we press this. You can see how it says load. It's already on channel zero, but we can go, okay, holds nine presets. So we'll go down to zero. That'll load those settings for this. And how I arrive at these guys is what I do is I just use the base settings that the machine uh, calls for. And then I start welding with it. And once I, you know, tune it up or down and make some real subtle changes from the factory settings, then I save it into memory on the machine and then I just write it down on this little cue card so it helps me to revert back so now when I'm doing a project I don't have to like think about it again I don't have to try to figure out what's what I just know if I go to channel zero for eighth inch aluminum 35 thousandths 4043 wire that'll be good and then I just keep that little cheat sheet right inside there it just makes setup and it just cuts a lot of time down it just makes it real quick so you're gonna need straight argon gas so I'm just gonna pull the trigger with this just real quickly and then we'll re get a reading on our argon so we're at 30 and all flow meters are different and if you look at this it's saying to read the flow rate at the center of the ball that's what this is indicating some are at the top of the ball some are at the bottom of the ball all flow meters will have a tendency to be a little different just know what yours is but we're gonna run ours at about 45 CFH pull the trigger there That'll compensate for, I say wind, there's not a whole lot of wind right now. I got a tip for you guys that work outside and do welding outside and you're having a hard time seeing the weld puddle. Make sure that the sun, if you can help it, is not behind you. What will happen is, is that the sun will get into the back side of your helmet and it'll actually cause a glare that reflects off the inside of this and it'll just make it harder for you guys to see. So if you can help it, have the sun be head on to you you'll be able to see your weld puddle a lot better when you're working outside. And if you're struggling to see your weld puddle inside, try shining a really bright, like a halogen light, right on your weld puddle directly in front of you. That'll help light it up and it'll make it a lot easier for you guys to see. So again, if you guys are having trouble seeing your weld puddle, that's just one of the things you can do. You can also get like a cheater lens, which is basically like a set of readers. It, that works really well too. With this process, guys, the technique to this is pretty identical to just regular steel MIG welding. Hold the same angles, except you want to push and try to avoid dragging if you can. The pushing of this, what that does is that flows your coverage gas ahead of where you're welding, so it helps clean everything as you go forward. They make another gun called a push-pull setup, and that's what they use in industrial fabrication for like aluminum trailers and stuff. And what that is, is that's basically a regular MIG gun, uses a big spool, some of them even use a barrel, and it pushes it at the machine, and then it pulls it at this. It has another little drive motor, which is simulating this spool gun. The spool gun, the disadvantages of that is sometimes they're big and they're gommy and they only take the smaller spools. It works pretty good if you're doing occasional aluminum, and you can pick these up for right around 100 bucks. So they're pretty economical. We're also running DC electrode positive. guys in the background but yeah look how wide that bead is that's gonna work awesome that's gonna work perfect guys no issues either with the wind uh, biggest thing to worry about when you're welding guys is that you're comfortable if you're not comfortable you're not gonna get a good weld Nice big bead on there guys. I'm also welding it downhill and the reason for that is that this material is pretty thin and MIG welding aluminum is hot. Eighth inch, sixteenth inch is right on the cusp of how low you can weld with MIG aluminum without actually burning through. Going down to help use a little bit of that gravity to my advantage so that I don't overheat it and just evaporate the metal. Mm -hmm. 
that is going to work really good, guys. Going just weaving it back and forth. You can see I wrapped it around the top when I went down, and I even went back to help kind of reinforce all this in there. That is going to work great. These two sides are done. Get these sides prepped right now. Then we'll get them all welded. Then we'll flip it over. Then I'm going to V-bevel out the tops of these, fill it with weld, and grind it flush. That way the decking or the planking can go back on this, and it'll have weld where it didn't have weld before. I feel pretty confident now that this is going to hold. It just wasn't a whole lot of weld on these pieces to begin with. Whereas we're adding a lot more, I think it's going to help. Plus, I've also notched in, as you can see, all around it to help get a full penetration weld. Plus, I think coming up and wrapping it in like I did and wrapping it and then wrapping the top around is also going to help disperse some of those forces. You also want to try to get your grounding lead close as you can to your work. Aluminum can be a crapshoot sometimes, and it can cause you all kinds of problems, so it's nice that this one's actually laying in pretty good. I cut my wire every time just to make it so I get a nice restart and it's consistent. I would never dare, you know, promise that this won't crack again, but I feel pretty confident that it won't after seeing how, how much weld was on there before and how we're applying it now. I just feel really confident that this is going to be a nice solid repair for him for years to come. But I want to bring you in and show you this and this is like wrapped around super nice. This is going to work awesome. Alright as we were doing it guys I noticed more cracks. Look, I don't know if you can see that all along there. Looks like we got another one there. Okay it doesn't appear as though there's a crack there but there is right here and you see it the whole length of that weld and it's just because there's not a lot of weld there they're thin look at this this one they didn't even bother finish welding it they stopped the weld short no wonder it cracked look at that same thing there same thing there as much as it's nice to have repeat business we don't want to have repeat business because our work failed I also forgot to mention guys that welding aluminum or even breathing in the grinding dust and stuff is super poisonous, super bad for your health. Make sure you're wearing a respirator. Is You only got one set of lungs. I'm doing this outside and I'm well ventilated and I'm making sure that I'm not breathing in the fumes, especially when you're inside. That's where it becomes real problematic. Not so much when you're outside because you've got the air to disperse everything. I've got a stainless steel wire brush and as you can see it's brand new and it says AL only so it's only for aluminum so I don't end up using this on something else and contaminate this. It's important that you have dedicated tools just for aluminum. I'm sure this aluminum decking or docking wasn't cheap but I mean a lot of it's just poor workmanship. Look like they didn't even finish the weld they just stopped it short and that's why I think this thing has a lot of cracks in it. See the same thing there? Didn't fill their weld in at the end. Now it's got a big crack in it. Same thing here, super thin, hardly any weld whatsoever right there where they terminated it. Crack in it. And same thing right here. Another big crack in it. It's pretty rough. So we're just gonna go through and we're just gonna weld all of that. Hopefully that'll Take care of that issue. I don't know if you got to see any of that at all guys but I just went through and welded out all of this all the way down through and I had commented at how nice it was to be able to have the machine set up right in the middle and this is a 16 foot platform and be able to work the entire thing without moving the machine around. Now that we're all welded here let's flip it over See if we can see any other uh, cracks, and we'll address those while we're at it. We still got a whole nother one over there to do. You know, guys, in my opinion, that's just kind of unexcusable when you pay for something that I'm sure this was thousands of dollars, and you pay for something like this, 
and come to find out that the workmanship wasn't done right it you know they're stopping a quarter of an inch short or whatever you know that's multiple failures there failure on the employee that was supposed to be welding it the proper way and failure on the supervisor for for not overseeing their employee properly i'm kind of a firm believer that do it once and do it right your reputation is everything and in a competitive world that we're in it's nice just to to do a good job you know that's your name that's tied in with this oh i won't even have to uh v it out you can already see there's a gap so what i'm going to do is clean this up here same thing here clean it up you can obviously see that a piece of decking screws in this that's what goes across this and it all fits flush this is a really nice uh setup just obviously lacking a couple details that needed to be done prep this fill it with weld we'll weld that right in then we'll grind it down flush that way we can get a full it's not going to be as strong as if we didn't uh, if we didn't grind it off but it's going to definitely make it stronger it's going to bond the two halves together so we'll do that there and we'll kind of walk through and check everything else out as we go this right here doesn't have a gap in it and this one doesn't either so we'll create one I think my Alzheimer's is sitting in because I welded that side and I didn't even press record. Welcome to being 53. I'm gonna have to move quick on this one guys because of the gap. When you grind aluminum guys, you don't use one of these wheels right here, one of these hard rock wheels. You gotta use a flap disc. And the reason for that is, is that one of these wheels will fill up and cake up with the aluminum uh, shavings or filings and it can cause it to expand this disc by it packing full of all the aluminum and the disc can explode so make sure you're using a flap disc when you grind an aluminum They're all ground down. Those came out awesome, guys. So it's got now a third more weld than it had before. So that ought to help a little bit. But the more I look, the more I keep finding. So from what I can see, I think there's only one more bad weld that I got to repair. And that's this one right here. You can see it's cracked all the way. But just look how thin that is, guys. I mean, it got penetration, obviously, but there is not a lot of weld holding that together. And I think that that's one of the big problems with this. All right, after I fix this, I'm gonna go run to Matheson and go pick up some more gas before I end up running out. That way I'll be all set up for tomorrow, first thing. There's nothing like running out of gas. At the, it's always gonna run out at the most inconvenient time, so. There's still about 400 PSI of gas in here. Whatever. Just go get another tank, and that way we'll have plenty. Don't have to worry about it. There. All right, guys, we are done 100% with this. We're all finished up. So now, you know, after just like anything, after you do one of something, you become really good at doing it. So. This next one will go super easy, especially once now we're all set up and ready to go. We got all our settings, but I do need to go get some gas before I end up running out. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll see if they even got some more wire. I hope they carry Blue Demon there, but I don't think they do. I think I ended up ordering that online. All right, so I'm gonna get this one off. Like I said, it's all done, ready for my customer to pick up and we will set up another one and get it on there and get it all ready to go. If we don't get to it today, we'll do it tomorrow first thing. Work 
Oh, we need to get this tree over here. I don't particularly want it looking like Sanford and Son out here, but whatever. There we go. There. Nice. Alright, second verse, same as the first, I noticed it's got a little dent here, pile more cracks, typical, this one looked a little bit worse actually, cracks there, looks like maybe another crack there. Yeah, right on that edge. See it right there. More cracks there and there. And there. I'm gonna go grab some gas real quick and we'll probably be resuming tomorrow morning. I'm thinking we're gonna probably just run out of sunlight and everything else, so might as well start fresh tomorrow and go from there. So I will see you tomorrow. Always fun to spend money in the welding store. How's it going? That You wondering whose bottle that was in the corner? Yeah. That was mine, I just dropped it, bottle oh. of argon. Yeah, I just need to exchange uh, that argon, that empty one, for a full one. Yeah. What's this on the... Brandon Lund. Okay, 186.74. Holy, 186. Why so much? Yeah, 125. Right. Hazardous materials. <sighs> Jeez, that was like $75 the last time I got it. Yeah, I don't know. Is that, in, a, is that under my my uh, five-year lease? Yeah, I believe so. How long, what's the size of that tank? It's a 125. 186, I don't see right now. $186 for this? That doesn't that's ridiculous. I woke up this morning, guys, and look at what I woke up to. Unbelievable. Welcome to Maine. This is why we have to get our stuff done when we gotta get it done. Now I gotta get this inside my workshop, which I'm not really looking forward to because it's gonna be cramped. I want you guys to know that I did talk to the gas company and they straightened it out. Apparently there was some sort of error in the billing and they charged me the proper amount. It's still a little higher than I wished it was. They charged me $99, but apparently there was some issues with their system upgrading and how I got charged. But I'm curious, what are you guys paying for Argon, for a tank of Argon? That was a 125 tank and they charged me $99. It still seems a little high. I wanna say, I think it's around 70 bucks, but let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm curious. Until the next one, guys, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe, God bless. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Come, come.